Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Friday, June 14th, 2019, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. Our guest today is Amir Frank. Hey, Amir, good to see you. Good to see you again, Dan. Uh, and, and, and yes, we are seeing you again. You've been on the show all this week, uh, Matterport Marketing Manager, um, uh, taking us through um, uh, a Matterport Workshop 3.0. Uh, this has been a, a training week. You've covered a lot of ground. We had two more subtopics to talk about in terms of uh, workshop 3.0. And as you've been doing all week, uh, we're just assuming that uh, that um, the only experience that I have with Matterport is what you've showed me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then what you're about to show today. So we're assuming I don't really have any knowledge other than what you're, what you've been showing me. And that's because this show is, is really, if you know, you're watching the show now, you, you, you know, maybe you've just bought a Matterport camera. It hasn't arrived yet. You wanted to get a head start on workshop 3.0 and, uh, and you've tuned in to, you know, to, to get that training. Um, or maybe you're a seasoned pro and you just want to see, are you missing out on any, uh, you know, any, you know, tips or tricks or features of, of workshop 3.0. So, um, uh, Amir, what, what would you like to uh, train me in today on Matterport workshop 3.0? Okay. So, uh, first let me go ahead and start by sharing my screen so you can see, uh, what I see. Great. I, uh, I see your yep. screen. Uh, so we looked at a lot so far, uh, everything from, you know, we started, if you remember, by looking generally over the, uh, the cloud kind of uh, platform. Um, for every tab and button you can, uh, you can see and think of, uh, we have covered it, as well as going into uh, Showcase 3 or, or uh, Showcase Edit or Workshop 3. Uh, as you mentioned, and covered all of the tools in the toolbar over here, and um, as well as all the uh, settings and the settings option. So we've covered a lot of information today. What I wanted to go over was the apps. These allow you to syndicate or upload your model data and your panoramas to other sites. So uh, let me move you up here. And I'll go ahead and go to the apps. And you can see that I have my available apps. Uh, as we have previously mentioned, but I just want to go over it real briefly, some of these uh, may be grayed out. Uh, like, for example, Google Street View, if you're an admin, you can uh, say that, you know what, I don't want to upload to Google Street View, and I don't want any of my collaborators to accidentally upload to Google Street View, not really knowing what's going on. So um, in the settings for your account, you will find you can manage the account in this uh, uh, menu item right over here. And if you scroll down, you have these options to, um, well, here's a uh, uh, content. You, yeah, OK, got it. Sorry. Um, Here's the yeah yeah yeah. The Google Street View is is up here, and if I disable that by by default it is enabled. But if I disable that, um, my uh, my Google Street View app will be grayed out. I will not have access to that, so it is now disabled. Um, and if I don't want models accidentally um, linking or syncing with uh, realestate.com uh, listings, then I can turn off the content distribution down here. As you see it here, it's disabled. So by default, anything uploaded to my account, uh, be it by myself or uh, collaborators that, uh, that may have cameras out in the field, uh, you know, if they set an address, it won't by mistake uh, link with um, RDC or realestate.com. So for this demonstration, I'm going to enable this. But before you enable, how about just going back just for a second so yeah. we can see what that screen looks like. Uh, like when we've now disabled Google Street View um, uh, disabled uh, HomeAway and Verbo and also Realtor.com. So you can't click on those because they're not they're you not see active. Is grayed out. And you yeah. do get when you roll over it with your mouse, you do get this little message down there. You can see it. Uh, it says to publish to Google Street View. Please number one, enable Google Street View in account settings and make the space public. So um, 
Okay, yeah. great. So if you don't want to get charged you, you uh, by accident, you can disable so the, these features cannot uh, be charged either by you or your collaborators. Exactly. Okay, yeah. cool. So we'll go back to settings, manage my account and enable mm -hmm. Street View. And uh, we'll go back to my models and back into apps. Okay, similarly, uh, you may have noticed that if I lock this up, these will become grayed out as well. So mm -hmm. with a model that is not public uh, or not accessible via the, um, the share link, none of these are going to work. Yeah. So make sure that this is public model. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started with Google Street View. Uh, if I tap that, it'll open up the uh, GSV app. It's just an in-browser application, very similar to what Workshop used to be prior to uh, Showcase Edit. And now, basically, what I'm presented here with is uh, a guess of where this um, structure belongs, where this model belongs in the world. Uh, it don't, don't count on that to be accurate, uh, you will need to put a business listing. So what you're doing when you're uploading to Google Street View is you are linking the panoramas from your model to a Google business listing. Uh, real estate properties cannot be uploaded. Google does not allow that. Uh, so you're really looking for um, businesses, coffee shops, restaurants, any, any, anything that uh, business may want these panoramas uh, associated with their business listing. So um, I guess what I can do is uh, clearly uh, this is a house, <laughs> but for this demonstration, I'm just going to uh, pretend to, uh, to choose a, uh, a business location. So I've chosen uh, Costco uh, the store on Lawrence Station Road, and I'll just click that, and then it's gonna come here and what I would do is I can move and just click and drag the map, just like you do with Google Maps, uh, as well as use the uh, zoom in and out to, uh, to see more of it or less of it. And when I see the map of the structure, I can use this arrow to rotate and this arrow to kind of slide around. So if I need to rotate it, I can rotate it this way and then I can grab it, slide it around and Again, we're assuming that this is correct and you have the entire model of uh, this Costco warehouse store. So your model would fit over it like that. You just wanna make sure that uh, it's facing the right way. So in your model, uh, just you know, pay attention to where the front door is. And uh, if you know that the front door is located over here, rotate it accordingly. So it's facing the right direction. Uh, once you've done that, once you've positioned your model correctly, you can go here to next. And now we're going to uh, log in. If uh, let's start over here, let's assume that I don't have an account. I'm going to add my uh, Google account. So I'll press add account. And then it's gonna take me over to uh, my credentials over here where I can add my uh, Google account. So I'll just click over here, asking me to put in my uh, password. So you said Google, so that's your Gmail account. Yeah, this is my Gmail account. Exactly. So forgive me for one second because I don't know any of my passwords. Um, let's see here. Okay. I'll, I'll put my hand in front of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So it's just asking me, you know, this is the typical, uh, do you allow permission for Google to get in here? Okay. So, uh, now the account is here, but it has not been selected yet. So I'll have to go up in here and tap that once. That brings me automatically to the next page. And now you can see that I have a green check. This is very important. This indicates that there is in fact a business listing. Um, I knew that just because when I selected it, it, it populated in that drop down initially in, in, uh, in step one over here. But uh, this just is confirmation that a business listing does exist and my upload will be associated with that listing. 
Um, if you do not have a check mark, something is wrong with your address and you need to do that, uh, to correct that. Uh, lastly, what we have down here is which panoramas will Google look at to associate with that business listing? It's not necessarily going to associate the business listing with every panorama that you upload or every panorama in your highlight reel, but that is the pool of panoramas that you're limiting Google to look through. Now I'm confused. I, in, in, we learned how to hide scans. So if I had a, a model that had 100 scans and I hid five, am I now giving Google permission to look at 100 or look at 95? 95. So if you have a hidden scan, it's not going to be uploaded to Google at all. Okay. Uh, so let's say, let's, let's go with that. You've got a hundred scans in your model. You've hidden five of them. And so you're uploading 95 scan positions to Google uh, street view. You've got out of that, maybe let's say 10 in the highlight reel. Okay. So this first option include all scans. It's not all of them. It's only the ones that are shown, not the ones that are hidden. So this all means the 95 that you're uploading to Google. Okay. Uh, this option only looks at the 10 that you have in your highlight reel. Again, these, what it's doing is it's looking at just these 10 to um, associate with the business listing. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Google Maps or Google Street View, you have the uh, business listings on the left. Uh, once you've kind of selected your business, you got the listing on the left with all the photos. Those photos that get populated there, this is the group of photos that Google will be looking at to know what gets added to that list of photos. Again, it's not necessarily all of them. It's not maybe, you know, that's totally up to Google. They may not take all 10 in your highlight reel, but they're not going to take anything other than those 10. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the single image, which is your start location. So it um, went a little bit fast for me. I, okay. I, in the, where I've transmitted the 95, the 95, uh, 360 images. I, so I, I can't do both. I could do one or the other. So does that mean I can come back and then publish, republish again, something additional or does it does that mean it unpublishes what I previously published because it's taking something new now? No, no, no. So um, all 95 are going to get uploaded, but this decides which of those 95, maybe all of them, get associated with the business listing itself. So all of them are going to be uploaded. And when you're looking at Google Maps, you'll see 95 little tiny blue dots. Okay. So I'm still, so I'm page. still confused. I just want clarification on this because I, I see three radio buttons. So we're, at, we're, if you've checked the button just above in, include your curated images from the showcase highlight reel yeah. that is transmitting, uploading highlight reel and the 95 360 photos. Um, so the, the, the 10 in the highlight reel are, are also part of the 95. There's an overlap there because remember you can't have a scan point that is hidden. Yeah. Right. The, the 10 in your highlight reel, none of that, none of those will be uh, any of the five hidden scan positions. Right. So, so they completely overlap the 95 scan positions that you're uploading to Google. You're uploading all 95. This is just determining which of those 95, get associated with the photos that, that are on the left panel. Mm -hmm. Okay. You'll have access. You'll be able to navigate your way around all 95 positions, no matter what you select here, but which of those 95 get associated and are displayed on the left panel where you can see those photos. So there's a, there's a second opportunity here to promote digital media to Google in addition to having it show up is what we think of Google street view. We can also be submitting images for those thumbnails that show up in, in, in Google, uh, in the Google, my business in that left panel. Right. So let me uh, open up another tab here and I'll just go to uh, maps. And, and while you're looking, maybe Ross could introduce himself. Ross, uh, how about taking it uh, off of 
Uh, you're on mute there, Ross. Let me unmute you. Yeah. How about Ross? How about introducing yourself? Just trying to sneak in and listen. Oh, you just want to listen at the moment. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll, we'll bring in towards the later when we uh, uh, open it up for questions. Then. Okay. Um, so you can see on my screen, um, I have. Let me uh, zoom in. Let me try and zoom in here a little bit. There's the there's the Costco that we are, and I'll even uh, use the satellite view so you can get a more looks a lot more like what you see in Matterport. Um, so this is this is the Costco, and you can see over here on the on the left panel, I have these these images. Mm -hmm. This picture right here. So I can click on this. I can scroll down and see these photos. You see these photos? Mm -hmm. uh, so all 95 images are gonna get uploaded. And if you click on your little peg man, this little yellow person right here, all you have to do is just click on it. And now you can see the streets kind of lit up in blue here. And mm -hmm. there's even a little image, a little blue dot right here in the center. Mm -hmm. So you'll have 95, you know, in our scenario, you'll have 95 of these little blue dots all over this warehouse. Cool. Uh, if you have chosen this middle button to only um, to only show to only um, you know uh, correlate, I guess the the scan positions in the highlight reel, then in this uh, photo section, you know, ten of these uh, twenty nine hundred ninety eight plus photos mm -hmm. will be just those that are in the highlight reel, not the rest of them that are not okay. in there. That's good. I, I'm, I'm clear on that. that. That's cool. And there's a little legend at the bottom that says uh, whether it's street view or photosphere. So that the photospheres translates to the, to the, um, yeah, well, that, that's an interesting, so those thumbnails on the highlight reel may have been either a 360 view or a two dimensional photo. So yes. uh, of the, of the highlight reel that we're transmitting, to uh, street view, some may show up as is a three sixty view, and some may show up as a two two D kind of photo. They're all actually no, they're, so they're all going to be the the three sixty panorama. Keep in mind that to, to Google Street View, you're not uploading your dollhouse. You're not uploading any three D data. You're just uploading the three sixty panoramas that come from both three sixty. Yeah, but here, here here's why I'm confused, Amir. Is that um, when we went over the highlight reel, I had an opportunity, I thought, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just, uh, so when we take a snapshot, the snapshot is of a 360. So really the highlight reel is composed of all 360s. Uh, yes, the, so the highlight reel, um, let me just uh, clarify that point actually. Uh, we'll get out of here and kind of go back. Let me just click out of here. So let's look at the, the highlight reel for a second. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you are capturing snapshots and you intend on using those snapshots later in your highlight reel, okay, I'll go into the snapshot tool. Uh, you only want to be using the 2D option. Okay, so ah. if you're going to use this snapshot in the highlight reel, you only want to be using the 2D option. That's not to say that a visitor will not be able to pause and look around the entire 360 but you're just capturing uh, what's in this frame that I can see right now in front of me. This so is. if I capture a 2D snapshot and then I use that 2D snapshot in the highlight reel, what does Google get? Do they get the 360 view of that 2D? Correct, they get, they get the full 360. They get the 360, okay, okay. That, that's why I was confused. I didn't oh, understand yes. that. So, so because I, I do have the option, you know, while I, I know it's a relatively new feature, but on, when we're adding to high, what, we, what we learned yesterday in part four, doing highlight reel, that we have an option of just adding kind of uh, 360 views as we go through, or we can actually use a 2D snapshot or a 3D snapshot is part of highlight reel. Mm -hmm. But when we actually now uh, publish to Google, if we select that second radio button, it's in, in our scenario, it's transmitting the 95 360 views to Google. Plus it's telling Google, here are the 
let's say there were 10 images on the highlight reel, whether they were 2D or 360 views, they Google literally gets the 360 view in order to place that 360 on their map. Correct. No Correct. 2D yes, images. They're, getting, they're not getting a 2D image of that. If you want, you can certainly download the 2D snapshots and uh, upload it outside of uh, Matterport. You know, through here, you can just say add a photo. But yeah. uh, you, uh, when you upload through this tool, you are uploading 360s, the the entire uh, 360 panorama. Okay, thanks for uh, for clarifying that. And then I see there's a third radio button. Uh, the third one here at the bottom is, uh, I guess, reducing even more what gets associated with the uh, listing. This is your start position only. Okay, so I could imagine that you you don't you're not going to hit publish because it's a house and you don't want to put it on Costco's map. But if you did hit the publish button, what would we then see? Uh, basically what will happen is it'll say, uh, okay. And it's going to come back here. This will say processing and it can take time to process. Um, first things first, all of the panoramas get uploaded. And then what happens is Google needs to do some processing on their end uh, to know how they are linked. So it's easy enough when you have a 3D model in Matterport, but when it's Google, it's 360 views. Imagine, imagine you know, going from the, uh, the 360 views uh, that you've captured outside as opposed to the 3D, the navigation is not, uh, is not there, right? So they have to build these little arrows, the Chevron arrows that allow you to move uh, in different directions to, to the next uh, scan position. Okay. Uh, so and that can take some time. And, and how do I know when it's successfully? When it's all done, it'll no longer say processing. Um, I don't remember exactly what it'll say, but it won't say processing. Down here at the bottom, you'll have a trash can icon to uh, delete everything you've uploaded from Google. So that'll actually pull back everything that's been uploaded as well as a pencil icon to uh, edit. So if you have uploaded this and let's say you've chosen um, the, uh, the middle icon, uh, the, not the middle icon, but the, uh, the highlight reel, what we were just talking about, um, only to, uh, to select from the highlight reel, then you can come back. Let's say this is the only one that uh, was previously selected and you, uh, you wanna change your mind and, and actually make everything available uh, then you can come back here, edit this, change it, hit publish, and then it'll know to uh, increase that pool of uh, nine, you know, to, to the 95 scans. So for, for clarification, let's say I was charging a client uh, for um, hosting maintenance and support on a monthly basis. And in month 12, they decided to no longer uh, wanna pay my hosting maintenance and support. Then I can go back to this page and unpublish what I published. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is correct. You're publishing through your Google account also. So you can actually log into your Google account, find um, the all the different assets, the photos that you have ever uploaded, and just delete them one at a time outside of Matterport. But it's much easier. If you're going to do 95 scans, much, much easier to come back in here hit that delete button uh, on the app and get rid of them that way. Very yeah, you, you beat me to the punch there. So um, I, you know, exactly. If, if I've published 95, 360 views and I just want to unpublish them, it seems like I just want to hit one button and not have to go look look for all, all the 360s to do that. Um, Absolutely. And, oh, uh, and when they show up on, do I get an email from Google? Do I get an email from Matterport to say, good news, your tour is ready? Or do I just need to keep checking Google Street? So it should take, I, I would uh, keep checking Google um, only because the one, those panoramas don't take that long to upload. Um, could be only uh, you know several hours, um, but it could take up to, I believe 48 hours for Google to, um, to register how all the panoramas are linked together and where to draw those arrows and, and uh, you know, place them accordingly. Okay, so there's really two steps here. One is the, how long does it take to upload? Once Google has it, they may be publishing the 360s 
as individual 360 views to the map. And then maybe two days later, or it's up to two days later, then it could show up as the tour that, that we know of. Right. Minus and that would explain why when, when I read the We Get Around Network forum, I see a number of members post to say, hey, I, I published a Google. I'm new at this. Uh, I can see my 360s on the map, but I don't see it uh, as street view. And so they just need to be a little bit more patient. It takes that's not Matterport. That's Google taking that's up to 48 cool. hours to construct the, the tour with those sergeants or carrots or arrows, whatever we want to call Correct. it. Exactly. OK, good. A anything else to talk about on on publish to Google? Uh, once, once you've uh, clicked this and uploaded it, even if you, let's say, delete it, if you want to, you know, re-upload a second time, it's not going to cost you again. So there's just a one-time charge for uploading. And at that point you can edit, take down, put back up however many times you want. There's no extra charge. So let me, let me just ask one follow-up question here on, on Google before we move on, because I, you know, I do see, uh, again, in the, we get around network forum, they're, they're third-party businesses like, um, uh, um, Pano Skin offering a service, Pano Skin Pro, uh, and and uh, and what what they enable uh, is to be able to edit the actual photos uh, and moderate the tour in terms of which scans you're walking to or not walking to, etc. Which may be different than how Google interpreted it. So, um, I, I can you could just go back to publish to Google for a second. Uh -huh. In and, here, in the yeah, Google, yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, you know, I also noticed in the forum there's another business, uh, MP2, uh, uh, MP2, uh, uh, S, let's see, SV, MP2 SV. Uh, so in that business, will take care of moderating the tour in terms of maybe editing, uh, taking the camera out of the shot, maybe adding it in the deer, a logo patch in the bottom, et cetera. So there was some other, if you go one, there was one more, maybe we went, we got to go maybe next, if you hit next, uh, uh, I, I guess we have to assign it to a business, but ah, there it is. Invite uh, a collaborator to publish. Could you explain this? Because I think this is relevant that if you want to use a third party solution or a third, a third party company to help you moderate the tour to color correct, to add a logo patch and all that kind of stuff that they might say, Hey, can you enable me to grab your images from Google, make the edit, put it back on the map and then pass the model back to you. Um, so I don't have very much experience with that. I'm not sure that's possible because we're not, uh, you can't uh, re-upload data. You can't, you can't bring back that data to Matterport. Uh, not, to matter, not, not to Matterport, but back to Google Maps. I see, I see. Okay, yes. So it is definitely possible to uh, invite a collaborator. In this case, what you're doing through the tool is inviting a collaborator so that they can use their Google credentials to upload. And, Could you just uh, hit the invite collaborator button so we can see what, what's under there? So it pops me over to uh, invite a collaborator, uh, just like I would invite a collaborator. Um, let me get out so of here. So that was the same dialogue yes. box. Yeah, that was the same yeah. dialogue box as inviting a, a collaborator in the Matterport world. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is that, is that the same form or it just looks the same, but it's actually inviting a no, you're actually going to be inviting a collaborator to, uh, <clears throat> to be part of your organization, your account, and collaborate on that model so that they can, they, they'll have editing rights and they can go ahead and uh, upload using their Google account. Now I'm really confused. Right. So I, I, before you said that last sentence, what I was thinking was, oh, <clears throat> so they can, they can, they can moderate using my Gmail account that's associated with Google, but they have the ability to edit as a collaborator. I, I think I'm asking something that's different though. Um, so <clears throat> the invitation there is designed for, I guess, users who don't have uh, Google accounts or, or to, Gmail to accounts. Let me, let me read this, yeah. invite a collaborator to publish, to publish using someone else's identity and then as a collaborator to this space with edit rights, they can edit their 
identity and publish with their account. Ah, so I see. So I think what's happening is you're you're allowing them to be a collaborator to Matterport. Then somehow magically you're allowing them to move the model to their Matterport account, associate their Gmail account with the model, and then do something with it. Even more simple than that, they're not actually moving anything to their Matterport account. Okay. But as a collaborator, okay, with editing privileges, they can log into this model just like I can as the admin, and they can navigate through the GSV tool, and they can add their own Gmail or Google account, and then upload based on that. So they're uploading to GSV from my Matterport account, but they're uploading to Google using their Google account. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, because I think, I think in the case of, you know, what I've been reading about M2, MP2SV is that when they use their account to publish the tour, uh, let's say to that Costco location, then mm -hmm. they would have the ability to download the images to their computer, re retouch the images in terms of color, add in the deer a logo patch. I um, would imagine it's certainly easier. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it definitely gives them control because as we said before, remember, uh, because this is uploaded through my Google account, I can, mm -hmm. I can log into Google, I can go to my profile in Google Maps and see the assets that I have uploaded. Uh, mm -hmm. to every location, right? Not, not just through Matterport, but uh, through Google um, and, and uh, download and tweak those images and then re-upload. Okay. So, I know this week has been a Matterport workshop uh, 3.0 training for newbies. And I think this is probably outside of newbies. But on the other hand, if you're new and you, and you don't really understand Google Street View, uh, I'm just trying to find to say, oh, there's a third party company that can go, you know, add the logo patch, color correct, yeah. uh, remove the camera from the mirror, um, uh, do whatever your other. Client, yeah, if your client has that interest, uh, you know, in adding that information, logos and things like that, and maybe you don't have uh, the skills, like you said, maybe mm -hmm. you can invite a collaborator that does have the skills and they can take care of uploading for you. So that's where that button's really important in inviting yeah. a collaborator as it relates to- You uh, as the account owner pay for the upload, but they have uh, the rights on their Google account to go in and edit. Cool. Uh, um, okay, I think that that's probably enough on that topic. I probably shouldn't spend no too, much, too, too much more time on that. Um, is, is there anything else on published to Google Street View before you move forward? Um, no, that's, that's really it for Google Street View. I just wanted to point out that you're not uploading uh, the model. You're not uploading anything that is three-dimensional. There's no way of getting the dollhouse view. The navigation is going to be Google Street View navigation, not Matterport navigation. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep that in mind if anybody's expecting to see a, a dollhouse and uh, the ability to kind of you know, zip around the way they do in Matterport, it's not like mm -hmm. that. Well, let, let's say it's not like that today. We'll we'll leave today. open the po the possibility no, that Google one day it. Google will take advantage of the the uh, features of Matterport, which I think as uh, Google Street View on steroids. And right now they're just taking advantage of the vanilla aspect of the 360 views that they then reconstruct what Matterport constructed in the Google Street View like experience. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So cool. on that note, uh, the same goes for Verbo and HomeAway. You are not uploading, even though this is a, uh, uh, a home listing site, uh, so it is unlike Google Street View, obviously. In that sense, it's more like Realtor.com, but you're not uploading your model. You're just uploading the 360 panoramas. This is 2D data only. But for clarification, the, the, it, it doesn't show up as just individual 360s with, with Verbo and HomeAway and Realtor.com. They're actually, again, putting their own arrows in and reconstructing. Just, just the, like Google Street View. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yep. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they are reconstructing the, the panoramas into, into a navigation, I guess, that they uh, feel works with their environment. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's. Um, pretty much it. Could, for... could, could you show us Verbo? I mean, uh, yeah, what, absolutely. What, what happens in terms of stuff? Yeah. So it's just a matter of clicking on the uh, on the little app, 
Um, you come here, you put in the address to the property listing itself and, uh, and hit uh, create tour. I, and, and, and then what happens? Do, do, do I get an email? Do I get an email from Matterport, from Verbo and HomeAway? Do I have to come back and check the screen? What, uh, how long does it would, take? So um, there, as far as I know, there's no um, email, but uh, you are notified via the, um, should I take that back? And I'm not even sure if the, the app will notify you the same way that Google Street View does. So uh, with no email notification, I would always just, you know, for the sake of, uh, I guess, being a little bit uh, anal retentive about it, go to HomeAway or Verbo and check the listing to make sure that it's up there. Okay. And, and, I, and I think I should probably add today, Friday, June 14th, 2019, this is actually public beta by Matterport with Correct. Verbo and HomeAway. So uh, this is really new for this is very, very new, new app that was added uh, to this section. So uh, hopefully there'll be more apps to come, but for now, this is very new, still in beta. Um, if you run into any uh, issues, definitely uh, reach out to support and let us know. So, and, and just to maybe manage expectations to, for Matterport service providers, this is probably a good example of under promise, over deliver, un under promise to say, this is still experimental. I'd like to do my best to publish this to your Verbo and, and or home away uh, uh, property listing. Um, but there are still processes and procedures that are being worked out. So we will hope for the best that within 48 hours, perhaps that it'll be ready. But if it's not that the, the service provider may need to do some troubleshooting either with Matterport or Verbo and home away, because this, this process is that new. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a, that's a very, very good point. Um, considering this is in beta, probably don't want to go out and guarantee uh, clients that this is a working thing and, and no problem. Just give me the URL and it'll work. Okay. Uh, um, uh, Ross, I know you're listening, but did, did you want to ask any questions before we move on? Is there anything that you had Verbo and home away related you wanted to ask? No. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, th thanks, Amir. Then I think we have one more app. Yeah. Lastly is uh, realtor.com. Uh, we touched on this previously. The only thing that you're going to get when you click the app here is this window that allows you to see what the current uh, default state is. Uh, in my case, it's disabled, so we can go and enable that uh, at the account level, or if I don't want to enable it at the account level and just want to enable this specific model, then I can uh, open up this app, just move that over to enable, and then hit accept. And then um, what happens? So again, just a reminder, uh, you're not going to see anything happen. It does take about 24 hours because only once a day uh, does Matterport sync its data with Realtor.com. Do you so know what time of day? You know, I'm not sure. Um, Is it very? Off, off peak. Uh, I don't believe it varies. I think it's the same time every single day. And, uh, you know, probably like four or five in the morning, something, okay. something not, not middle of the day. Okay, so again, that clock may not start until that once once a day sync. So if, if you upload it at 8 a.m., you, you really may be three days away from it showing up rather than two days or something. Yeah, well, with Realtor.com, it, it's automated. It's fully automated, so it should be every 24 hours. Every 24 hours. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so just to kind of recap <laughs> where that uh, um, account level default is, if you go to your account settings here, and again, go into manage. That's the one way down at the bottom. Content distribution, currently it's disabled and I can enable that. Now, what this means is that every model uploaded, whether I've uploaded it or a, a collaborator working with me has uploaded it, um, it, by default, it's gonna be enabled. As soon as I have an address appended to that uh, model, let's go back into here and look at the address. Uh, details. So as soon as I have this address in here, within 24 hours, it's enabled, it's going to try syncing with RDC. R... Uh, Realtor.com. That's what they call it. RDC. Right. Okay. I'm in the know. <laughs> RDC. 
So, uh, and again, just to recap, we, we've, we have been over this, but it is very, very important to make this line of address, uh, this address line, just like the address in the listing itself. Again, this is what it's using to create that sync between the two. So if this, for example, um, uh, if I go in here and choose one, two, three Main Street in Los Altos, you'll notice that for whatever reason, because of the way the systems work, the one that populates uh, one that populates this, which is powered by Google, and then that results to something else that's that's in, in here. Just make note of what you end up with. Even though I selected street spelt out, it chose to go with ST. If my listing in realtor.com has street spelt out, this may not sync. Yeah, so this is really important for if the service provider is doing this to check with the client and say, hey, I really need to know exactly, exactly how it's going to be listed in MLS. Yeah, copy <clears throat> paste, don't just tell me, <clears throat> copy it from the listing page, paste it into an email and send it to me. That way I can just paste it in here and you know it's gonna be accurate. Uh, also, if you paste it in, and something comes up down here, you know, you don't even have to bother selecting it because that may change just like this did. So yeah. just type it out and then hit enter on your keyboard. And then that way it saves the entire name. Okay. Uh, Maybe one day they'll figure out how to do the same thing that Google does. And so it just matches and you know that yeah. it's correct. Um, Ross, I, uh, you raised your hand. You had a question. Uh, before you ask your question, how about introducing yourself, uh, your full name, your company and where you're located? Um, I'm Ross Sanducci. I uh, own and operate 3D Roomscapes in uh, Illinois, Grace Lake, Illinois. So uh, uh, kind, of, kind of the greater Chicago area, and we'll put a, a big circle around Chicago to make sure we get Grace Lake in there. I'm like right in the middle of Chicago and Milwaukee, right in between. So yeah. I do so up north and south. Um, you know, I don't use this option at all, and I'm wondering why I don't, because... It seems to me, I mean, I, I just allow, I just let my realtors, the, the agents said, give me the, you know, the, the jobs to scan. I give them the links and let them post it to realtor. Why would I want to post it to realtor? I mean, is it just the three D scan and is there any information besides the scan that gets published to realtor.com? Yeah, they just have the scan uh, embedded. Your model will be embedded into their system. Uh, no different than had the real estate agent pasted into uh, the listing, you know, via their dashboard in Realtor.com themselves. Uh, it just saves a step. You know, if, if your agent well, is, well, if I if I do it automatically, excuse, excuse me, just for a moment, uh, Amir, do you mind just taking us off the screen share? We'll we'll, oh, yes. we'll 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 be in, so we'll see everybody. Yep. Yeah. So if I. If I upload it to Realtor.com and then my agent also uploads it, what happens? So it's already there. They just, I'm confused. Yeah, it'll default to the, so the number one, um, Realtor.com looks at uh, a few things to, to see the, the Matterport uh, data come in when they're looking at it. Number one priority is what's put into the 3D field in the dashboard uh, for the listing itself. Um, that takes precedence over everything else. Uh, number two is the um, MLS. So if you have the Matterport model listed as a 3D model in the MLS listing, Realtor.com should be able to scrape it from there and include it as the 3D model in their listing. And number three, if none of those exist, then it'll look uh, at this sync option and, uh, and choose this if, if nothing else uh, exists. So this would go in even if the Realtor never uploaded to realtor.com when they create their listing and they put the pictures in and everything else if they f forgot to put the 3d tour in realtor.com would automatically know where that goes based yeah. on the based on the matterport link uh, based on the address on the address okay. yeah so as long as their listing address is the same as the address that you've added to your model it'll it'll link so it has to have street spell out or not spell out. All that has to be exactly All the same. All that has to be exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, 
maybe a, a minor uh, uh, efficiency kind of uh, step. Um, but I think like, like you mentioned, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work. You can always just pass off the share link to your agent and they'll just post it. It's a matter of a few clicks. Anyway, I just wondered if I should offer, say I'll have it already posted at realtor.com and they don't yeah, have to worry about that. But hearing what you're saying is I'm not, I can't say that because I'm not hundred percent sure that I'm going to get it on there with the right address and linked up properly. And yeah, if the address yeah. isn't exact and yeah, yeah right. I think I'd rather let them worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I had one follow-up question on on Ross's question: Is uh, if I do use the uh, the uh, Realtor dot com app to publish to Realtor dot com with the listing, and I did that successfully, um, the house sells. I archive the model. I delete or archive the model. Is there something that's still left that Matterport still has, either the model or the data or both associated is, with is that address? Model, is, is the model still going to display on the realtor.com listing page if you've archived it? Is that what you're saying? Well, that, that's actually a different question, but that's a good question. I'm actually asking, so the, the house sells... Okay. I have licensed my content to that realtor solely for the use of promoting that listing. The house sells. I either archive or um, or delete the model. Mm -hmm. Let's say I archive it with the new pricing, and then um, then let's say a, another real estate agent lists that house for sale. Is that model now going to be served up by Matterport automatically or the MLS automatically because it's been transmitted to Realtor.com previously? Yeah, so that's a, actually a really good question. Uh, the first part of that uh, question, what I would say is prior to um, archiving or deleting your model, what you want to do is disable the sync with Realtor.com so that that little button uh, on the listing page disappears. Can we and, go back to that? Uh, yeah, so if you... Oops. And so I have two places that I could do that. I can do it either individually for that particular model or I can do it globally for all my models. Right, right. And in this case, if you're just talking about a single model that you want to uh, have removed... Right, if we could models. go back to realtor.com, RDC, I, where does the D come from? Uh, dot. Pardon? <laughs> dot. R D C. Yeah, the D oh, is down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Over my head. Uh, so I'll, I'll open up the uh, the app again, and I will. If, if my default is enabled, I will specify to disable the, for this model. Okay. Hit accept. Wait my twenty four hours for this to resync yeah. and remove that button from the uh, Realtor.com listing page. And, uh, and then go ahead and archive this. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe a, a better way for me to ask that question is, 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 is let's say my client's not paying me and I was accepting money af after I delivered everything. In that case, it would be still possible for me to p yank it back by disabling it individually on that page. I'm not sure I followed. Can you say that again? Sure. Um, uh, Ross is my real estate agent. Uh, he engages me. I shoot a tour. Um, I publish it to his listing and uh, uh, Ross fails to pay me. And I now want to take back that, that tour that I had published to Realtor at RDC. And so I want to go back and, and disable the content management system from using that model. Will that break? Will that stop the real estate agent from using my tour that they haven't paid for? Uh, yes. So w when you disable this, or even if you archive it, they will not be able to access it through uh, realestate.com. So if you've disabled this, the button on the listing will disappear. If you haven't, and you just go and archive it, the button will still be there. But once it's clicked, you won't be able to see a model. It'll just have an oops message. 
Okay, so that's a little bit like unpublished for Google Street View. Exactly. And, and presumably there's a similar process for Verbo and HomeAway. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, for yeah, Verbo and HomeAway, you can also okay. uh, take down. Because I don't think I'm going to end up charging Ross by the month, but if I was charging him by the month, <clears throat> or maybe, excuse me, may, maybe he had the he had the right to use the art for three months and then after three months he needed to pay me monthly and then you know he, he didn't pay me i just want to know that i have a way to take the content back absolutely i suppose for that matter i mean i get i guess another question would be well if i went and disabled the if i just made the model private yeah you can do that that'll that'll cut every everything so every every link that's out there uh, I should take that back. Anything that's been uploaded to Google Street View, for example, will still be uploaded to Google Street View uh, even after you have. Uh, and, and the same for VRBO and HomeAway, presumably, because I'm verbal, translating the 360. Yeah, the same for VRBO and HomeAway, because uh, you're not. Realtor.com, they're accessing your model. These two, uh, GSV and, and VRBO and HomeAway, you are uploading panoramas. So you would need to, with these two, go into the application and take back that data and delete it from their servers. Uh, okay. As opposed to with realtor.com, you can just go ahead and hit the, uh, you know, private, make private button there. And uh, in that there, I mean. Okay, so for, for over clarification, for publish to Google Street View and Verbo Home Away, I can unpublish. And for realtor.com, I can break the link e either by that, disabling the content distribution system with either individually for that one tour or globally for all tours, or I could just simply set the link to private and, and then the model won't get, won't show up in realtor.com. I just want to understand that in case uh, uh, Ross is a deadbeat. I know he's not. So, but just, just in case. <laughs> Pardon? Yay me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. I'm I'm totally clear on apps. Unless you had something else you wanted to show here, I, I think we're probably up to the next topic. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, that pretty much covers it. Uh, so yeah, that does take us to the next topic. And the, really, the last thing that I wanted to mention, Dan, was uh, the last kind of and final thing that you can do to to edit how visitors see your model, and that is via URL parameters. So the way that works is if I, uh, let's see here, I'm just gonna go here, uh, get rid of that tab. If I go to our uh, support pages at uh, support.matterport.com and I just do a search for URL and hit enter, the first thing that comes up over here on the left side is URL parameters. Mm -hmm. And what these are is a list of parameters. You can see them kind of listed down, down here. Um, these are little additions to the share link itself, okay, uh, that you can add to the URL to kind of customize uh, how this is viewed by your visitors. Okay, so before you, you help me understand what those little crazy characters are in terms of a URL, URL parameter, what are the kinds of things that, that does this enable me to do? What am I trying to accomplish that I'd want to go to support.matterport.com, <clears throat> excuse me, look up URL parameter, uh, and then add these funny characters, whatever they are. But so what, what can I do with a parameter? So uh, things you can do, uh, for example, define how the, uh, the help um, graphic is displayed in your model? Do you want it to appear every single time that a visitor comes or just the first time when the visitor comes? And if the same visitor comes back, they no longer need to see that help graphic. So it's not necessary, things like that. Or, or do you not want it to be displayed at all? So you have those options here. Um, the highlight reel, do you want the highlight reel to um, appear uh, and then kind of minimize and disappear? Or do you want it to stay up uh, so the visitor can, can see that and, and use that as a way to navigate around. Um, let's see, oh, if you have your model embedded in your website, um, it will not automatically play. 
So do you want that to automatically load and, and, and uh, play for the visitor as soon as the page loads uh, or not? Um, so things like that. Uh, there's a whole bunch more in here. Quick start. Uh, let's see, the, the highlight reel um, you know, can start after a certain number of seconds. Uh, it'll just automatically start to play without the visitor having to uh, actually click the play button. Um, branding, uh, whether the, uh, the dollhouse uh, is visible or I think has the, the fly in, I'm not, these, these change from time to time and new ones are added. Uh, so it's always a good idea to kind of come back here and uh, just to get an idea of what's, what's available. Uh, MLS is actually one that's available. In fact, MLS, we've seen this before, when you go into the share link here, you can see MLS as a tab. And when I click this, you'll see that ampersand MLS equals one is automatically added. And then I can just copy the MLS listing, uh, the MLS uh, link. Okay, so let's say I would like to, and I presume they all work the, the pretty much the same way. So let's say I, I want to embed my Matterport 3D tour on a web page, and I'd like to have it load uh, immediately. How would I do that? Uh, so if you want to have it load immediately, that is the quick start. And that, where did that go? QS right here. So ampersand QS equals one will be this option right here. And that is to enable quick start. Uh, the default is zero. So there's really no sense in having it uh, and, and, and adding a parameter that says ampersand QS equals zero, that, that's the default. Um, so you would just copy this, go back to your uh, listing page, go to branded, and I can uh, copy my uh, link from here. I'll open up a new tab, paste, oops, I did not copy that. Copy that, I think that's copied now. There we go. Paste that in and then paste in the parameter. Um, and what if I wanted help to show up as well? You can, uh, you can do that as well. So you can add as many parameters as you like uh, in a row. You just, oops, put my cursor there. Uh, ampersand help equals, and we'll just do, uh, I guess, option number two. So that you happen to remember, but if if I if I didn't remember that, I could go back to support.matterport.com, search for URL or URL parameters, <clears throat> then look for, I want help to always display, regardless of whether somebody has seen the model before or not, or if I only want it to show once per visitor, this is, th these are the examples, uh, these are the parameters that I would use to do that. Yeah. Um, so back here, we should get a, uh, a help graphic and it should uh, launch right into the model without having the dollhouse and then zooming in and all that. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And there it goes right inside. It didn't, it didn't load the dollhouse and then zoom me in. It just started me in the start location. So if I wanted the highlight reel that's set to walk through, to automatically take us through a walkthrough and, ha oh, well, I guess it, then it would have to launch anyway. So I wouldn't need the parameter for, for, for go into the tour and plus the highlight reel play. Well, um, you can, because sometimes maybe you just wanna make it one step easier for your visitor who may not be familiar with Matterport and how it works. You may wanna launch that highlight reel for them so uh, you can add, for example, um, I believe it's, oops, ampersand, don't forget that. Ampersand TS uh, equals, and I just pick a number of seconds. Zero is not an option with, with this one, so okay. I'll just do one, it's the least amount of time. And uh, I'll go ahead and hit enter. So it should load me right into using the quick start, and now it starts the highlight reel. I didn't, I didn't click play or anything. It just automatically started it after one second. Started what? The highlight reel or started the highlight reel? Yeah. So, so, so you put in, 
<clears throat> excuse me, Amir, you put in two different parameters, one to automatically launch the tour, and then after one second of launching the tour, it launched the highlight reel. Correct. So now, that's the parameter that I have here uh, does not automatically launch the tour, but only because this tour is not embedded, it automatically launches. Ah. Does that make sense? So if, if I had this actually embedded into an iframe on my web page, I would need another parameter that says uh, ampersand play equals one. That parameter will automatically uh, load the tour and then the TS equals one would then automatically play the highlight reel after it's been loaded. Okay, very, very powerful stuff. Parameters, yeah. Matterport parameters. Uh, um, Ross, got any questions on parameters? I, I got you on mute there, Ross. Let me let, let me unmute you. Yeah, Ross. No, I um, I use parameters quite a bit, and I really there's so many of them. I you know you just got to play. <clears throat> You just got to yeah, try play, 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 play. what they do and see how they work. It would be nice if you had some kind of example how here's what it looks like. Well, it says, doesn't it? It says, see example help screen. See, isn't it showing you at the bottom of each of those? Is that what that uh, is? Yeah, you can, you can yeah. see this, but you can see it uh, just for this one parameter. And if you're adding a string of them, uh, you wouldn't be able to test that out unless you just add them in yourself and play around with it. Okay. Can you take us off the screen share a little button up there, Amir? Um, uh, so Amir, this has been awesome. Is, is there, is there anything else on parameters? Uh, that pretty much does it. I think Ross hit it on the head. There's a lot of them and more get added every now and again. So, um, check back. Yeah, you just gotta keep looking. Just gotta keep looking and stay updated. Okay. All right, cool. Ross, you got some questions for Amir? I, I, if you're, are you ending this now? Well, we're going to do questions. Oh, well, I had a, I had a question, I, but you hadn't talked about it yet, so I don't know if you're going to do another one later or something. Okay. Uh, the only thing that bothers me with this new showcase is when you're trying to create pictures and 2D snapshots, and you're, and you're trying to line up the shots, when you let go of the mouse, at least on my computer, it doesn't stay where it is. It kind of floats. And then you got to kind of catch it and then put it back where you want it, and then it floats a little bit. It doesn't, like, snap. You know what I'm saying when you let go of the mouse? Interesting. Line, okay. and you have the shot lined up with the lines, the grids, and everything, and you get and you let go of the mouse. It should just be solid right there. So it's locked right there, but it doesn't. It kind of floats. It doesn't stay in that one position. It moves oh. a little bit, so it's not level anymore. You know, you get it all level, and then it's just before you go to hit it, you know, it take the picture. It moves, and it, it's not level. And what got, um, what kind of mouse are you using, if I may? Just a regular I'm mouse? Use the a magic, magic mouse, you know. Oh, the magic mouse? Okay. Um, or wireless mouse. I'm not sure that's, yeah, the wireless mouse. But it's a, it's a flat one uh, like uh, like Dan uses with the one button. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's the best way to show. <laughs> that's the one. Yep, that's that, that, and that, that's what I use. I know everybody's like, well, yeah. no, why aren't you using like a forty-seven button mouse or something? So no, I'm I'm old school. Uh, I like my my yeah. simple, clean mouse. But, but I did like, learn from Amir that I can set up that even though it looks like it's only one button, I can still set up something. Oh yeah, on the this bike. Is, yeah, this is a two button. It looks yeah, like, it's, it's it looks like button. a one button. But I've only been using as a one button. button so. yeah, my, my uh, personal, and this is completely off topic, my personal issue with the mouse is just I feel like it's er not ergonomic. I have a, a pretty big hand. I'm 6'3". Yeah. Uh, so I have a big hand, and that mouse is so flat and uh, streamlined. I just uh, I can't I always get a kink in my wrist when I use it. Um, I would play around with trying a uh, very normal mouse. Um, you know, just, just I don't know if you have one laying around an old your USB mouse. See if that maybe does it. Um, I only say that because I have not experienced that um, before. Sorry, I, I haven't seen that kind of floating. Uh, you know, after letting go. If I uh, is it okay if I share my screen, um, Dan? Sure. Okay, so so if I uh, go back into my model and you're using the snapshots, so I'll edit. Now I'm using a trackpad, so uh, I don't know if that's, but if I 
you know, I'm clicking with my thumb and I move with my uh, finger, uh, when I release and then release the thumb, it, it completely sticks. Uh, so I don't. I, I'm talking about when you're in, in the sna in the photo. Oh, oh yeah, let me let me get in there. Okay. And it might be different, and I don't know, but that's where I see the issue there. Okay. Yeah. So does it does it not? That's actually a good point that you raised. Does it not happen uh, if you're not in the photo? Does it only happen in this mode, or do you still get the drift and just may not pay I it? it? I get it here, and I also get it when I'm adding it to the highlight reel. What I usually do is I take a picture. I get it lined up, I take a snapshot, and then I switch over to the highlight reel and I add it to the highlight reel. It'll do it in both. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I imagine, I imagine it'll do it regardless of being in those tools. Well, let, let's do this. Let, let's, let's do this and see if it actually happens for Amir. And Amir, at the same time, um, uh, Ross, this is, this is way cool. Matterport just introduced a really cool new feature in workshop 3.0 which may literally change some of your workflow. So uh, Amir, if you could go into uh, highlight reel and yeah. um, let's do, uh, just let's add that view, just hit the button for add view. Okay, so that just added that shot. Let's try and just uh, move it a little bit, see if there's any drift just before you hit add view. Uh, so I can just kind of move yeah, around. And then, and then hit add view. Well, okay. you would know it before you hit add because like now. Yeah, he's saying as soon as he releases the mouse button, it, it starts to kind of drift a little bit. Not yeah. a lot, just enough to make it you have to stop and go back and straighten it out again, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, that's interesting. But the, here's here's what I wanted to show you, Ross. Uh, Amir, if, if you could go to the right of the add view button, click on that and explain right. for Ross what that new feature does. So uh, this feature, uh, as Dan mentioned, super new. And it allows me to actually look through the snapshots that I have already captured using the snapshot tool and add these to the highlight reel. So I can select any number of uh, images that I want to add and in, in this order, so number one, not, not in the order that I clicked on them, but in the order that they're, they are displayed here. So basically chronological as they were captured, uh, this will be first in the highlight reel and then this one and then this one. Uh, and I'll hit add selected photos. So Ross, that's adding the snapshots, the highlight reel. Yeah, so, that's what I used to do. That was the old one. That's what I used to do. Here, yeah. Okay. Do you like that? Yeah, that's, then you don't, that, it's, then it's a one-stop process. I mean, now all you have to do is take a snapshot, correct? Correct. Then, yeah. So yeah. That, that, that's right. If you, in your workflow, in your workflow, if you just did your snapshot, uh, use that icon there to select all the images and, and boom, they're, they're in the highlight reel in the order that you captured them. That's perfect. It, it, to make a, if it you doesn't want to take solve the drifting, step, but, but yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. Okay. That might be with my computer, but if you wanted to take this one step further, have an option where just like before, when you took a snapshot, it automatically went to the highlight reel and then you could delete it or move it around if you wanted to. You, you, you're doing the same thing you used to be, do before, except you add a step to it. Before, yeah, so basically, in the old workshop, when you took the snapshot, it would go automatically into the highlight reel, correct? Amir, can you take us off the screen share there? So yeah. um, before the way it worked was you would capture a snapshot, and then you would go into the highlight reel tool, and then you would start dragging them down one right. at a time into the reel. Right. Yeah. So this is similar. Um, this is this is this is kind of taking that uh, into consideration. We, we obviously we got we got some feedback. Uh, people didn't want to Me. recapture the snapshot. Yeah, <laughs> they, I, thought you, listen, I thought you'd just, like to see that little button, Ross. It just got I just got added it. added back. It probably got added back because that was something you really really wanted. Um, but I think you know oh. the, I think the example is if you took fifty snapshots and then you went back to that button, you could pick you know which right. ones you act because in your 50 snapshots you might have shot you know the bathrooms too is part of snapshots that you were delivering to your real estate client but when you did your highlights reel you might not want to include those bathrooms so that's an example i think it would make your workflow a lot easier so you, you do 50 snapshots and then select the 37 that you actually want and then it'll populate the highlights reel in that order yeah and right. to, to your point dan especially if you have 50 snapshots you can just quickly uh, choose the select all button 
to select every one of them and then deselect only those few that you don't want and then click add to highlight reel and it's actually a lot yeah, faster than the way it used to be with dragging every single one. That would work for me because I, I usually take them take the snapshots in the order I want them in the highlight reel anyway. So yeah, exactly. Voila. So Amir, I just have a, a, a few questions and then we'll re recap. Uh, uh, and then Ross, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll give you the last chance to ask questions once I get done with, with mine. Uh, Amir, if I go do the labels on the floor plan, okay. if I add labels on floor plan and then I order a floor plan, a 2D schematic floor plan for Matterport, does the, do the people who work on the floor plans use those labels to help them know to call that a carport, not a garage? They're supposed to use the labels. But it's also very, very important. Let me uh, quickly share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, to make sure, remember we looked at this, that labels are visible. So mm -hmm. in your um, edit here, in, in, the, uh, in the edit view, you come down to the settings and more down here, these three buttons, mm -hmm. and you go into settings and go into advanced. You wanna make sure that labels uh, this option is enabled. Otherwise, the floor plan team won't be able to see it. They don't have the access that you do to your model and they can't see those labels unless you make this enabled. So Okay, so important. we could perhaps in, 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 improve uh, some of the, uh, maybe reduce the chance for what we would consider an error when the, when the carport is called the garage or the, the living room is called the sunroom or the sunroom is called the, you know, it's supposed to be a bonus room or whatever yeah. it is that, that, that may be unique to uh, the South of mm -hmm. calling something a, a sunroom and a carport, et cetera. Uh, with our own language uh, and then the floor plan team would, would, would hopefully look at those labels to use the same labels. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, does uh, the, on the, on the walkthrough, on, when you create the highlights reel um, and you select an image and then you select another image, let's see, let's, let's say you're selecting a 360 and you're selecting a 360. Can you control how the camera rotates or maneuvers? So if you're using the arrows on your key to get from one scan to the next scan, is, is that contributing to the walkthrough experience? Uh, the, the pan, uh, yes. as, you, as you're, you know, either, either whether you use the slideshow or the walkthrough, when you get to a highlight, there's a slight pan either to the left or to the right. Uh, unfortunately, though we are working on it, at this time, there is no way to uh, control and manipulate the direction um, or distance that uh, is taken when, when it pans. It's fully automated, uh, completely you know, computer generated. It- I found, I found a way to make that go, to change that. And I've corrected a few. If, you, if, a, if, you, if you're in a scan on your highlight reel and it turns left and you wanted it to turn right, and you've got another scan right ne next to that one that's maybe in the same room, but could be, you could have it on either spot, either before or after the other one. If you switch those two scans, more times than not, all of a sudden they both turn the way you want them to. Interesting, okay, so. Say that slowly. <laughs> okay, well, there's times when I've had a scan, I, I'm, I'm watching the highlight reel and I come up to the to the scan that, I'm, that I wanna see next. And instead of turning left, it turns right and it turns into a wall instead of op opening into the room. If I switch, if I take that scan and switch it with the one next to it, if it's in the same room, then when I, and I play it back again, the next time I play it, now it's all of a sudden panning the direction I want it to pan. So did you, did you just move? I just switched the, 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 the highlights the, in the reel. Is what you're talking about. The you you changed the reel. order, you changed the order of how it played. Correct. The order of where I had to scan. Okay, so there's well, a tip. It doesn't always work, but a lot of times I've corrected a number of them that way. So, so there is, it depends. There, I don't know. I, I don't know what this, why the reason why that happens once in a while, but it does. It fixes it. So, so the the logic behind panning is that it will pan in the direction of the next scan. So in, in the highlight reel. Okay, so the next scan position that's in the highlight reel. Uh, unless you know, set aside 360 views for a second because those don't, don't um, should 
pan to the left. Um, but even that is not uh, as consistent as we would like it to be yet. Uh, so let's see, there is, um, there's, a, there's a good article. Um, I say that it's good because I wrote it. Uh, it's in the community uh, that has some images that, that can may help with this um, kind of envision what, what's happening here. So if you are at a scan position and you've captured that to place in your highlight reel, you're, you're facing a certain direction, um, draw a line straight down that path. And if the next highlight is to the left, that highlight reel uh, is gonna pan to the, uh, sorry, to the right, that highlight reel is gonna pan to the right. If the next scan position in the highlight reel is on the left of that line, it's gonna pan to the left. And then it'll well, move. That's, so that, that's how it should be. So if I'm following you correctly, that when I do my snapshot of the 360, I can affect the pan because I could say, face this direction with that snapshot just slightly, and my other scan is over here next in the highlights reel, and therefore it's gonna it's gonna start turning exactly. like this. So exactly. we we kind of have the um, this is kind of the ad, ad, advanced tutorial on how to affect panning. Uh, yeah. So it, uh, if and when I graduate from uh, newbie status here. Well. <laughs> Well, so hopefully uh, one day, like I said, there's there's work being done uh, to allow you as a as a user, as a creator of this highlight reel, to you know pick and choose which way do you want to pan. But at least knowing this, having this kind of uh, the sense of the logic that's behind the code, uh, you may you know understand. Okay, the next scan position, my highlight reel is going to be off over here. I want to position this in this direction because I know it's going to pan that way, as opposed to already face towards that scan position and then it's going to pan in a way that I'm, you know, uncertain. yes, because that before image, uh, uh, I could have it literally dead on to the next location or have it slightly to the left or slightly to the right. And that's going to affect how the, 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 uh, exactly. the camera will pan in today's world in, until that, I don't want to say gets fixed, but let's call it enhanced so that the um, service provider has more control over it. I, I, uh, this is kind of a broad question. Um, and, and I'll give you some examples. So um, uh, uh, what should I be doing in terms of scanning that affects the, the, the um, workshop 3.0 workflow? And I, I give some examples based on uh, um, your training all this week with me. Um, I could see, oh, if I scan too much, then I may spend an inordinate amount of time hiding scans. Mm -hmm. Um, if I scan too little, I may not have data in order to place matter tags or something else. Yeah. Um, if I scan sunlight, uh, then I may create a hole in the floor and, and my trying to put a matter tag there is going to end up going on the floor below. So do you have some tips on things about scanning that like maybe like those that affect the workflow in workshop 3.0 that uh that's a really good question and um you know i don't want to say don't scan uh, too much but also don't scan too little because that means nothing at all um i you know when i scan i don't really take into consideration um if i'm going to have to hide a, a scan position or not i certainly don't want to over scan okay but um, I will scan a position, sometimes even dropping the camera down, uh, knowing that this is not a scan position I'm going to use for navigation, knowing ahead of time that this is something I'm going to have to hide uh, just so that I can fill in that 3D model, fill in any uh, you know, black holes that may be in my minimap. Um, okay. So I, I don't really think about, I think about two things when I scan. I think about fully fleshing out the model, the 3D model. Okay, so seeing if you're in capture and you see an area that is black, that that could potentially be a, a hole in your model. So you want to avoid that. If it's caused by sunlight, you can um, you know move on to a different part of the house, come back when the sun has moved on. Um, if it's you know caused uh, because there's stuff in the way, uh, or if it's like a really really small room. Uh, 
then you know have a couple scans and maybe drop the, the the tripod down lower like i mentioned before to kind of fill in that floor data so you don't have a hole in your floor so i think about filling in and fleshing out the entire 3d model as best i can and then i think about uh, navigation remember that the only scan the only uh, areas that a visitor can access and get to is where you had that tripod is where you had your camera in the space uh, so you you want to make sure that your lines go straight you don't want to cut any corners uh, you're not going to be able to navigate through walls and it's going to feel very uh, unintuitive um, to kind of go at all of a sudden an angle so if you are a corner you want to um, you know draw that path of alignment uh, all the way to the end and then turn 90 degrees and then continue down the other hallway uh, if that if that makes sense so think about fleshing out the 3d model and think about navigation for your visitors uh, don't skimp out on uh, scan positions just because you're in a hurry the third thing actually not I, not just to think the third thing also very very critical um, is to pay attention to the minimap. Look at your capture app as you're scanning, as those scan positions are being aligned. It is possible for the system to misalign. There's no warning because capture thinks it did the right thing. Uh, so it just places the blue dot somewhere where it shouldn't have. And if you're not paying attention, you'll go on, scan again, and that will align to the misaligned scan and so on. It's like a domino effect where you get these, the whole section of the house is completely misaligned. Very critical to pay attention. Can, can I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. Because this has happened to me a number of times. Now I'm really watching it. I mean, I, it hasn't happened to me for a while, but I never, I never paid that close of attention before. And a number of times, only like three times that I know of that it just, I had to go back and it was just a nightmare. Why don't they, I mean, now I, it, now that I get it and I understand why it's happening and how it's happening and what to watch for, I, it doesn't happen to me anymore. But for new people and new newbies and stuff that, and even for me, it would be helpful if you could have some kind of an alarm or some kind of a beep when the line, when Manaport must know that when you do scan number 50 on floor two and scan number 51 all of a sudden goes to the basement, that something's wrong and that maybe there should be, somebody should look at something before you go on to the next one, just a, a signal or a beep. And there's, I mean, you have, you have warnings come up all the time that say, you know, not, you know, you might not, you, you want to move closer with the scan. You have a couple of warnings or the scan didn't take. Why not have a warning that says this scan doesn't belong here. There doesn't, there's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, there is work being done, not so much uh, for the warning side, but uh, to, to help with misalignments. We're, we're working on it. We know it's an issue, but uh, there's actually no way for the system to know. And that's why there are no warnings. So it is- Wait, wait Amir, we got a new patent here. Are you ready for this one? Is yes. it, it, it didn't attach to the previous scan. Yeah, something like that. So, I mean Meaning that for the, for the for most of us, most of the time we're in a linear process, and therefore one scan's attaching to the next scan, attaching to the next scan, attaching to the next scan. So uh, let's see. This would be a method for avoiding um, hockey pucks ending in outer space, um, uh, with the uh, warning Will Robinson going off because it didn't. The scan didn't align to the previous scan. So we have absolutely... number 4,627, exactly. Amir, Ross, and Dan. <laughs> um, so we... <clears throat> that works. Excuse me. Um... <laughs> Can you get back to us on that, Amir? My train of thought. I'll, I will, I will uh, look into that and get back to it. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, in, in, in fact, I'm glad you asked the question, Ross, because, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll go back to Matterport and say, hey, you know, maybe we should do a wish list day and, and then, you know, we can have... Um, you know, maybe even some of the product team or something. And all we do is say, hey, here's our wish list. Um, you know, uh, help us. This, this is this is what, you know, let, we won't put like Amir it. on the spot because he, he's actually been doing training all week. I, and I like, uh, I like wish list day. That's a, that's a great idea. Wish list day. Okay. I'm going to bring that up in our next meeting. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, Amir, unless you had something else to ask, I, I was going to move on to the, kind of the next thing. So, so just to kind of recap, because because I really think it's it's just critical uh, to to get an understanding about uh, alignment and how that works. So, capture will initially 
try to align with the last scan position. Okay, that's what it does for, let's say, 10 seconds. If it can't find alignment there, it's going to start looking at every other scan position on the floor. And that can potentially cause some problems and uh, create misalignment. Um, so while we do advise, and it is definitely best, best practice, as you said, Ross, to have a consistent uh, uh, path of alignment as long as possible, uh, eventually, you will have to break that path of alignment. You'll have to pick up this, the camera and move somewhere that is you know, not in line of sight of the last scan and start there. Um, I do advise if you do that to make it as much overlap as possible with a previously captured scan, um, but it does happen. And so if we have a warning every time somebody pick up, picks up the camera and goes off to another part of the, uh, the house, um, pretty soon, they're going to be like, I don't want these warnings anymore. I know I'm going to someplace else in the house and it defeats the purpose of the warning system altogether. Ross, would you, Ross, would you want the warning to, to, to know that it didn't attach to the previous scan? I would want a warning. And, and if it didn't, at least I would, I can say, cause there's a lot of times these warnings come up and I just ignore them because I could say it, that same thing happens. I'll finish in one room and I'll go to another room and it'll be right next to a scan that I did earlier, but it'll say it, you know, it may not be, a, you know, you need to get moved closer. I just yeah, ignore it I'll because I know it's right next to it and the one from earlier. So you could do something very similar and maybe just have like a, 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 a red a red light flash and that you could, when it pops up, you can say- Foghorn, we need a foghorn. Fog all you have to do is take a quick glance. Where did that scan go? Is it where it's supposed to be? Siren, that, how about a siren? Or a siren. <laughs> <laughs> so hey amir it's it's ross and dan it's two against one so uh please go talk to the product development team we'll talk, we'll talk to product we'd very much we'll like to have a foghorn go off if the scan did not attach to the previous one because okay. i don't well i don't mind if i get a warning that i move to the next room i see it i say okay i get it and at least if i know that there's a warning and i can look and say okay yeah, there is something wrong, or no, I expected that, you know, yeah. at least you're going to look, you know. Yeah. How about, yeah, one beep, 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 beep. Uh, Ross, how about good. that? Do you like that sound? Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, you go with me every time. I we, have, we have that recorded, Dan, so we can actually use that as the clip. Yes, I'm going to license that. Audio I, in, in, in worlds known and unknown in perpetuity, and uh, I'm sure my pricing will be very reasonable. I'll get back to you on that, Amir. So, Amir, before I, I thank you profusely for an awesome week, and I'm going to do that in a moment, I just want to give a shout out to, to, to Ross and some of his colleagues. Um, uh, uh, this week being uh, Matterport Workshop 3.0 training, uh, I reached out to an, a number of Matterport service providers, including Ross, and said, hey, could you just do a screen capture while you're editing your Matterport space? And so that we could kind of just look over the shoulder because I think Ross, I, I forget, I think you do 20 or 30 a, a month on average. Doing about 50 right now. 50, wow. you know, um, so, you know, I thought, well, let's look over the shoulder of somebody who's doing 50 Matterport 3D tours a month and maybe we could learn something from that. So, so Ross and uh, so a total of, of uh, seven uh, WGAN forum members uh, contributed eight videos totaling eight hours of looking over the shoulder of, of seasoned Matterport service providers watching kind of like best practices and tips uh, uh, of work of Matterport Workshop 3.0. So uh, Ross, I just want to thank, thank you and your other colleagues. A number of them let me know that they were actually out scanning today and some are actually international and it's already uh, late and, and it's the weekend. So um, uh, uh, Ross, how about on behalf of everyone, you accept uh, our, uh, the community's thanks for putting that video together. Yeah, it was great, Dan. I mean, I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. I, actually, I was thinking about putting a video together because I want to hire some people eventually and get some, I think I'll do a little training video, which I've never done before. So you offering to even pay to have it done was a bonus and uh, I appreciate it. And and it was interesting watching the other ones because it, it, it's, it's obvious when somebody doesn't do that on a regular basis that, you know, they're, it is fun watching and seeing the different ways people do things and how they see things and how they explain it because you can see that they're seeing it differently than you see it and 
it's a great way, great way for new people to learn. I think. Yeah, I, I think it's not only great for newbies. I would highly encourage if you're just starting out with Matterport and you want to look over the shoulder of, of uh, seasoned Matterport pros, th these eight hours of video, it's a lot of video. But the, 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 the thing is, I think even for someone who's a seasoned pro, I mean, for me, who you know has been scanning since July 2014, I go, wow, everybody's got the same tool, but everyone seems to have a different workflow in how they use the tools. And it, you know, isn't that cool? Because I can say, well, I, I do like what Ross is doing and I, I, I like what Angus is doing and I, I like what uh, Angelo's doing. I'm gonna take a piece from each of them and construct my own workflow that works for me. Um, but I, you know, I can succeed faster doing that because I, I've been able to watch eight hours uh, of, of you all doing your piece. And now to actually to bring it back to Amir, uh, I've had uh, literally, I think, more than five hours of training on Matterport Workshop 3.0 this week. So Amir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking it. My, my pleasure. It was, it was really an honor. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I, I and, you know, if, if you've missed any of these shows, we've recorded, uh, you know, all the episodes and, um, uh, to just kind of give you a rundown, we did five parts uh, on Monday, June 10th, 2019, part one. Amir covered all the settings on the screen, the icons at the top, uh, all the model pages, all the different buttons, of, of, of just so you have a kind of a lay of the land. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, June 11th, part two, uh, uh, Amir covered Matterport Showcase Edit, what we think of Workshop 3.0. Uh, showing us the start, how to set the start position, how to scan uh, and hide, uh, how to do um, hide and show scans, um, how to um, view and place uh, 360 views. On part three, Wednesday, June 12th, 2019, uh, he continued showcase edit, uh, uh, again, workshop 3.0, we're kind of using the terms in interchangeably, and showing us how to do snapshots, labels, measurement, uh, yesterday, Thursday, uh, June 13th, 2019, part four, again, continuation of, of, of Matterport Showcase Edit, uh, Workshop 3.0, showing us how to do matter tags, rich matter tags, highlight reel, uh, and also how to edit virtual reality uh, to edit the VR experience and why that matters. And then, of course, uh, t t today we covered... Um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, URL parameters, and uh, and I'm having a mental block. What else did we get covered? Yes, the apps, Realtor.com apps. Oh, yeah, all, all, all the apps. So this 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 series, we've recorded all five episodes. They're available in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, just you know, j uh, just look. F just uh, you can look for the tag um, uh, Matterport Workshop 3.0. If you use our search box, you'll find these videos. And I'm telling you, if you want to get a you know a a you're, you're new, you just ordered your camera and you're, you want to, you know, get up to speed as quick as possible on workshop uh, 3.0, you have the benefit of, of Amir going through literally every different button and permutation. It's taken us five shows to do that. Uh, and then you have the benefit of uh, folks like uh, um, Ross Zanchucci um, doing eight hours of, of videos looking over the shoulder. So that's something like, I can't count, 13 it's 13, it's actually probably closer to f almost 15 hours uh, worth of help just on the topic of Matterport Workshop 3.0. So anyway, I wanted to, to, to really thank you, Amir. It's been a, a, a great week. Uh, I feel like I now know how to use Matterport Workshop 3.0 and maybe I can graduate from uh, newbie status, get my Matterport camera, and then uh, uh, and, uh, be scanning successfully and editing successfully. Indeed. So, uh, uh, Amir, again, thank you. Thank you for uh, a, a big week. Great having you on the show. Uh, uh, covered a lot of material. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Dan. Thank you again for the opportunity. It's been, it's been really good. Terrific. And uh, thank you for, for watching. Uh, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. And... <laughs>